Good morning. I can't hear you. Hold on. It's probably my computer. Go ahead. Say something again. Hey. Oh, I can hear you now. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Let me get my computer up here. I'm going. Um, all right. We have our today's schedule playing off. It might take a second here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday. I'm glad to see everyone here could make it. I'm glad I could make it. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. As always, um, we bring on a special guest on the call. Today is September 28th. Uh, it's 10 a.m. We have a special guest, Ben Barlow. He's with the American State and Nationalist. Uh, so we're gonna go over our Iraqi Janar update. We'll let Ben take the floor and then we'll do our Q and A's um, following that. We do have a couple of admins that are monitoring. Let me open up that part of the call. I always seem to be late there. Okay, so I have it open, now I can see. And if anybody has any questions during the call, if you wanna just add those to our EDU um, Telegram group, that way I can see them also, so I don't miss any questions, but also feel free. Yay, our paper's done. Also feel free to, you know, if you have a question, stop us and slow us down a little bit because we might go a little fast with the information that Ben is gonna present today. So I'll go ahead and start with our update. There isn't a whole lot going on in Iraq right now besides the hype about the $20,000 note that is um, that will be digital. So it's looking like um, they're trying to keep up with their neighboring countries. So that's basically what's going on. The central bank did stress um, that there was going to be no change with the Iraqi dinar exchange rate. We don't know why he said this or why the Central Bank of Iraq brought this to attention. Um, you know, they've blown sp smoke a lot of different times in the past. So is this one of those times? I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, the former Central Bank options are used to fund a lot of corruption. And we're hoping that those are some of the things that, are, that aren't that are with us in the new um, Paragon where we move forward. And some of those, like in the United States, we only have like one a week so or one a month. So we don't want to see a lot of that because that's a way for them to move money. Uh, money laundering. Um, we're waiting right now again on the prime minister and the president to be selected in Iraq. What I won't be surprised if in the near future we're going to see a president seated and also the, pre the prime minister and how that works is they elect a president by vote and then they seat their cabinet within 30 days. And then after that, um, then they seat their prime minister or they vote on their prime minister. Usually they kind of know once they've seated their cabinet and then they move forward. Um, and the rest of my stuff, we will get into that with the Q and A's and I'll go ahead. And as we have our special guest, Ben Barlow here, um, it's so nice to have you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a general contractor in Salt Lake City. That's what I do for my work trade. Uh, I'd gotten into this movement August of 2020. I had found out a little bit about this in April of 2020. A cousin of, my, a cousin of mine sent me a video on David Strait, and it had to do with CPS. It's probably about a 30 minute video. And as I went through that video, because I've had custody custody of my daughter since she was three years old, she's now going to be 27. And I know what it feels like to go through the judicial blender, trying to work through this court system that is absolutely against men, no matter what anybody says, I've been through it. Um, and it doesn't serve us at all in any way, shape or form. So it was, he sent me that video and I watched it, uh, Unbeknownst to either of us, his brother had sent me an event invite for August of 2020. I want to say it was the 16th through the 18th of August. Uh, and I'm a big elk hunter. I was supposed to go elk hunting. I'd been planning it for a year and a half, had tens of thousands of dollars wrapped up into an elk hunt. And I ended up going to that seminar for the opener of the elk hunt and ended up not going on the elk hunt at all and brought uh, David straight back for another seminar two months later and then three months later brought him back again and three months later brought him back again and 
I've now done 17 seminars. Uh, I've been all across the United States. I've been to Texas, to Florida. I've been over to Santa Ana, California. We just got back. Well, we just got back with Bobby Lawrence. We went to Rock Springs, Colorado, uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. Then we went over to Santa Ana, California, and then jumped over to Scottsdale. I just got back a couple of weekends ago on that. And now we're heading up to North Dakota. Nice, North nice. North Dakota and on uh, October 14th, 15th, and 16th. And so everybody knows I met Ben on the Truth Tour in Las Vegas. It was a very humbling experience as I met a lot of uh, Truth Tour. Great. Yeah. And it was just an amazing experience. And um, I didn't really get to speak a whole lot with you while we were there, but I'll tell you how I ended up running into Ben again, and it must have been God placed me at the right place at the right time was because we were listening to American state nationalists on other platforms and we it was being introduced to us and then we're hearing this stuff and that stuff. And I just happened to be um, on the phone with one of our admins in the group and she was going on and on and on. We're going to do this and yada, yada, yada. And we got to listen to this, these videos. And so therefore I went to click on my Facebook. And as I clicked on my Facebook, Ben is going on and on and on on Facebook going, people need to wake up. They need to stop acting like they want to be a part of the process and be a part of the process. They just want to get to the end of this, but they don't want to participate in helping get to the end of this and, and stepping up for our country. And you were going on and I, and I was watching this and I was like, so intrigued by the conversation because in the comments, they started talking about the American state nationalists. And I'm like, holy crap, I just was, and it, there's a lot of different controversy about where to go and uh, where is a safe platform because we're hearing some people are being arrested for even taking the measures to be an American state nationalist. We're hearing that there's pros and cons to it and, and things like that. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, I don't want to pay taxes. Oh, I don't want to, you know, be compliant with the system that is basically keeping us enslaved. And so there's many people that are very interested in today discussion. Um, so let's start there with what exactly is an American state national. So it's an American state national. National. Is what it is. And basically what it, what it does is our rights, freedoms, and liberties were revoked from us through the birth certificate policy of 1933, and we were given revocable privileges the privilege to drive, the privilege to own firearms. Well, we don't have a privilege to own firearms. We have a privilege. We have a right to bear arms. So by them calling it firearms, that's one more way of regulating it. And that's what's happening here in the United States is we are being regulated uh, statutes, regulations, and corporate bylaws that are being implemented by governmental agencies that don't create laws. They create statutes and regulations. And that's not how our system's supposed to work. The lawmakers are supposed to create laws, and then we abide by the laws. However, through the birth certificate policy of 1933, they turned us into citizens, municipal servants. A city is municipal, as in is servant. And so we are accountable to the statutes, regulations, and corporate bylaws, which what most people don't comprehend is that there are no judges in the United States of America. They're all administrators under Admiralty Maritime Law and the Bar Association, which is the British accredited registry under the crown. So we never won our independence. In order for us to win our independence, we would have had to have a post office and we would have had to sell to each individual country and set up commerce as the new colonies. Mm -hmm. However, the king owned the seas, the king owned the postal outlets, and the, all the ports, so they couldn't go set up commerce. So they had to acquiesce to the king to pay him duty. We didn't have fight the War of Independence over tea and taxes. What we fought the War of Independence over was that the founding fathers created their own money, and they weren't using the bankers in Britain and England's money, so they weren't getting any interest on that money. Part of that uh, creating their own money, they had to back that money with something, and they backed it with the land. That's where the land patents come into effect. 
And so you'll hear us talk about land patents and that you don't own your own property. So a lot of a lot of people are going through life believing that they own their homes or they own their land. Well, they have a warranty deed, so they don't own anything. They go through life thinking that, hey, we are we are innocent until we're proven guilty, which is absolutely not the case because we're in Admiralty Maritime Law. We are guilty until we either spend enough money to walk away without any harm <laughs> or we win uh, the court case, but it's not on our side to help us or benefit us. It's there to extract money from us through fines, fees, penalties. And we're under the understanding that the quote unquote judge is there to uh, be a neutral party, but the judge is not a neutral party. He's there to administer what is in the benefit of the court. So you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And that's what uh, a lot of people don't comprehend. I try not to use the word understand because they've taken our language from us too. If you go into a court and you and the judge asks you, do you understand what the judge act actually is asking you is, are you under me? Do you stand under me? Which gives him jurisdiction over you, which people don't comprehend that either. So there's just a lot of things that we've learned in our lifetime that we've been indoctrinated into thinking and none of it's true. <laughs> especially when it comes to the court system. So, so we have a lot of new callers here that are probably thinking, what exactly is this? So, so. So I can, ex let me explain it on a, on a sure. easier level. Yeah, let's do that. Through the birth certificate pro policy of 1933, they turned us into citizens, which now made us accountable to the statutes, regulations, and corporate bylaws of the United States, which none of those are law. By Because we were born sovereign. We were born state nationals. And many people might want to get out their paper and pen for this because you guys are going to have a lot of <laughs> notes to have to fall back on. So that way you can get a really good understanding. Otherwise, this is going to go really quickly over your head. And we've got a three-day video that you guys can purchase off the statenational.us website. It's a three-day seminar. It's $80. It goes through all of this stuff from start to finish. It's a three-day seminar. It's uh, It's a really good video. And we're today going to get a crash course. Yes, so very, very ahead. fast. Yeah, go ahead and explain. So we're at the 1933. We're at the birth certificate. Birth certificate policy. They turned us into citizens, which made us accountable to statutes, regulations, and corporate bylaws, which are not laws. Uh, you have God that created man. Man created government. And then government created the citizen. Which is not so that which you create, you control. So God controls man. Man created government. So man would be in control of government. So this is mankind. It doesn't have anything to do with genders, men, women, children. Man created government. Government's supposed to be underneath us. Then government and the big bankers created the citizen, which put us from we the people at mankind. That's where we were. Everything in our Constitution, in the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights applies to we the people, but bankers and government put us, superseded us, and put us under them. So now the Constitution doesn't apply to us, which the Constitution applies to government, but the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence that grants us rights and grants us certain duties, such as abolishing out of control government or tyrannical government, doesn't apply to us anymore. We don't have rights when we go into the court system we have privileges because they revoked our rights freedoms and liberties and gave us revocable privileges and as long as we play by their rules as long as we do what they say we can keep those privileges mm -hmm. so how so what is the benefit if you were to become an, an american state national what 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 benefits do the people get from even thinking, oh, well, I want to I want to go back to the way it was before the 1933. If I want to go back. Well, how, how about the right to bear any arms that you wish? OK, so would be, it would be one of the first ones because we don't have the right to bear firearms. That's a way that they regulate them. Mm -hmm. We have the right to bear arms, and a lot of people misconstrue that to think, oh, well, you can only have what the government gives you. No, the right to bear arms gave the common people 
the ability to own anything that the government had. Mm -hmm. Anything, F-18s, <laughs> brand new F-22s. If you could afford it, you could own it. Mm -hmm. Any kind of gun that you want, even if it's a machine gun, they don't get they don't get the opportunity to regulate that with state nationals. So tell us some more of the pros behind this. So we we, we'll, we can bear arms once we've removed ourselves. And, and just to let everybody know, I did get into a little bit with Ben about what this process was. And it's a pretty lengthy process. Um, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But before we get into that, let's talk about some more of the pros. How about let's take it into the court system. In the judicial system, you are basically molested on every level. Starts off with a police officer giving you a ticket. For let's say you're driving down the road, a uh, police officer pulls you over. He now gives you a ticket and he is contracting with you. You have 72 hours. Most people don't understand this. They're no different than any other corporation out there. You have 72 hours right of rescission, right of refusal to contract with them. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand that they just have to send in a letter that says or an affidavit that says, look, I'm not contracting with you and I'm rescinding any signatures. You can get out of the tickets. What it does in the judicial system, it puts you on a different standing. Because you're taking back your rights, freedoms and liberties, and now you have a different standing in the court system. The judge is not over you. The judge has no jurisdiction over you. Of course, unless you're killing somebody, if you see our founding fathers promised us a republic under common law. That's very important that we comprehend what common law is under common law. If there is no victim, there is no crime where you guys already know that everything we do in the judicial system, we're afraid of going to court because everything we do is a crime punishable by fines, fees, penalties or jail time or prison. Just depends on how much they can throw, uh, how much they can stack against you, and if the prosecutor can make those charges stick. So, so, so if somebody is to get in trouble for a crime, will they be charged with a crime after that? Like, for instance, uh, once they become an American state national and they, they, I don't know, they steal a piece of gum. Well, you still have to make the people whole that you stole from number one, right. being American state national is you're not going to be breaking the law. Mm -hmm. You're self-sufficient. You're right. self-governed. See, we're not self-governed right now. We are meant to be self-governed people, but we don't govern ourselves very well. Therefore the government steps in and says, well, we need to govern you. That's so not the way it's supposed to be. So we can bear arms, we can take us out of the judicial system. Of course, we still got to be accountable for our wrongdoings with the person that we did the wrongdoing. So basically, they can't they can't press charges on you, but you are responsible to make good with whatever the they can sue you personally. Is that right? Let me, yeah, let me correct something. It doesn't stop them from molesting you through the judicial system. The judicial system is meant to molest you. Right. You somehow, some way, stick charges against you so you have to pay fines, fees, and penalties. Mm -hmm. That's not what the judicial system was set up for. Okay. The judicial system was set up for people committing crimes and okay. to hold people accountable for committing those crimes mm -hmm. and violating your rights, freedoms, and liberties. But it's the government who's violating your rights, freedoms, and liberties, not other people. So, so, so the guy down the street, that's not a American state national and you somehow run over his bush in his yard. I, maybe you had too many to drink next door and then you drove down the street and you drove off the road and you drove through his bushes and now he's upset and he's called the police and the police respond to the call. What happens at that point? Because you are American state. Well, they're still, police are going to come and they're, they're only trained to do what they've been trained to do. The first thing they're going to do p police come to address the situation that's going on and assess blame mm -hmm. when they assess that blame then they write a ticket or charges are mm -hmm. well tickets are given to the party who's to blame and then that information is sent off to the prosecuting attorney and the prosecuting attorney is the one who tries to make those charges stick 
or they increase the charges or decrease the charges to whatever's going to stick. And then you have to go through court. Mm -hmm. What, what most people don't comprehend is we don't need to have driver's licenses. Mm -hmm. Supreme court already ruled. We don't have to have driver's licenses unless we are driving in commerce. So the, to understand driving in commerce would be a CDL driver, a truck driver, somebody that's carrying some kind of cargo cargo. Okay. Mm -hmm. An Uber driver would be a driver. Mm -hmm. You getting in your personal conveyance uh, automobile and going from point A to point B in the private is not driving. You're correcting your status, standing, and jurisdiction. Those are the three things you're doing by becoming an American state national. Mm -hmm. You're correcting your status from citizen back to we the people. Okay. Okay. You're learning how to stand, which would be learning how to stand is taking and getting rid of all the indoctrination that you've been given before, that the attorney is the one there to handle your business and to make sure that you're not guilty or lessen your charges to something that's acceptable, which is what their job is. It's not there to plea your innocence. It's there to take from one and give to another. That's what an attorney's job is. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> status standing and jurisdiction the jurisdiction is you're taking yourself out of their jurisdiction in the judicial system mm -hmm. and you're backing up that jurisdiction by comprehending how to stand properly mm -hmm. so that they don't have jurisdiction over you so you're basically removing their jurisdiction yes they're being because they're they're only administrators and this is what let's go back to what a Let's go back to what a an attorney and a lawyer is. Mm -hmm. See, through the 1933 birth certificate policy, when everybody, for all the moms out there, you went in and you gave birth to your child, you signed as the informant on your birth certificate, which gave your child back to the state. A doctor signed underneath your signature, but he's not, we use that term loosely, doctor. They're not doctors. We use it for everybody that practices medicine, but they're not doctors. They're either physicians or they're specialists. The only one that is an actual doctor is the one who receives the babies and through delivery, and he's a doc tender because it's shipping. It's Admiralty Maritime Law. So when he receives the baby, he's actually, you mothers have went in there as a vessel. He's receiving the cargo from the vessel so he's he's signing saying, yes, I did receive the cargo, no different than a guy in a warehouse receiving a truckload of material. And then underneath the doctor's signature is a registrar. The registrar is certifying that the cargo was received and it's accepted in as property. And we are known as chattel property. So that that is what... <clears throat> If all of you will look at your birth certificate, there's a date stamp that was stamped onto your birth certificate that doesn't coincide with your birthday. It's about a week after your birthday. That date stamp is when they turned you into a little corporation. And by turning you into a little corporation, you are now accountable to legal, which there's two, just like there's, we use the term doctor loosely. We use the term legal and lawful loosely. What's legal is not lawful because legal applies to corporations. What's lawful is not legal because lawful applies to men and women. And, and so and, when, <clears throat> so let me, believe... let me go into this real quick. So when we talk about attorneys and lawyers, we use those terms loosely, just like we use doctor. But a lawyer is actually somebody who defends men and women mankind in the court system and an attorney is somebody who goes in and defends a corporation which is a dead entity so there's a reason why the judge wears a black robe there's a reason why you get a summons to court a summons in black's law dictionary is a seance because when we were born, we were cast out to sea as if dead until we return to claim our minor estate. So we are dead entities. This is why you need to get legal counsel so that legal counsel can represent you to the court. But he's not representing you. He is representing you because you are dead. This is why the judge wears a black robe. He's dealing with the dead. 
So as as you're being represented to the court, that those attorneys through the laws made in 1971, 1972, they cannot defend you. They cannot plea your innocence. All they can do is offer you a plea bargain offered by the prosecution. Well, that's not defending you. Why would you want to hire an attorney when he's not going to defend you? All he's going to do is he's going to play ball with the judge and with the other the other attorney until they can get you in a position where you either pay more money, you go spend some jail time or prison time. And they're going to give you a plea bargain. Hey, very That's all they can offer goodness. you is a plea bargain. So as a citizen, these are the options you get. Well, as an American state national, you're above that. You can now go in and defend yourself because you are the blood man and woman. You can speak. Whereas a citizen, you cannot speak in the courtroom. The judge will even tell you to shut up at the risk of contempt of court. Okay, well, is it civil contempt or is it criminal contempt? But see, so this is when you hear people talk about legalese. I hate that word, but it's a word that's used. Mm -hmm. Legal is what corporations have to abide by. Lawful is what men and women have to abide by because there's laws. So when we say, well, do you, I want to put together a company. Well, what do you want your company to be about? What do you want it to do? Bless you. Well, I don't care as long as it's legal. Okay, well, that applies to a company. But it doesn't apply to men and women because we abide by the law, not by statutes, corporate bylaws, and regulations. But that's how they've trapped us into this is by changing us into citizens. So we're accountable to the statutes, corporate bylaws, and regulations that are what corporations have to abide by. It's three to five months. It's not really that difficult. It just takes time. So I was going to say earlier, um, everybody can go to the website. Um, if you guys have your computers opened now, um, you can, or you can write this down and after the call, you can go in and Ben, do you want to give them the website they can go yeah, to? Look up go there. right up into your search bar. Don't Google it because there's people trying to copy our website. You're going to go right into your search bar, put in their app dot state national dot us and it'll take you right to our website um, if, you you, Google, if you google it there's others trying to copy our website state nationals with an s on the end of it that's going to take you to tasa which is a whole nother we already know that their process doesn't work so there so um and and then for anybody that's wanting to know, so once you were born, you're, you became into the birth certificate system or policy and your, your, your social has been being traded. Um, Not just your social. So, so let me go into that real quick. Yeah. Would well, you want to, um, <clears throat> do you want international, the international monetary fund pledged $650,000 for every birth certificate from 1933 to 1974 and it was backed by a million dollar insurance policy this ties into the judicial system and probate so from everybody that was every birth certificate from 1975 to 1999 it was a two million dollar insurance or excuse me a one million dollar uh pledge backed by a two million dollar insurance policy from the year 2000 to current it's two million dollars backed by a five million dollar insurance policy so what that is, is everybody can go look that up, gmeiutility.org. You can go to that website. You can punch in your social security number. You're going to put spaces instead of dashes, and it'll tell you every corporation right now that's buying and selling your treasury bonds. So treasury bonds is not cash. It's not Federal Reserve notes. Treasury bonds are backed by the United States. Every country wants our treasury bonds. And so... This is tied to the judicial system. So when you go in and let's say, just for an example, somebody gets into a fight, I'll use I'll use something that I know. Somebody gets into a fight, gets their ear bit off. <laughs> and in that process, the person who did the attack got three felonies against them. The penalty phase for a felony is $2 million a piece. Well, this person who did the ear biting doesn't have a 
pot to piss in. They don't have anything. They let alone a million dollars, let alone six million dollars is the charges. So when they go through the judicial system, what's going to happen is they found them guilty on all those charges. So then the. I'm going to run through something real fast. Courts are just banks. If you go back to all the old buildings in Chicago, in these big cities, you'll see the banks, the post office, and the court system was all in the same building. So courts are just banks. Judges are just bankers. Court clerks are court te or are bank tellers. The judicial system interacts with the Treasury Department. This is part of them when they repealed all the gold in 1932, 1933, they gave us, they can't, they can't, couldn't repeal all the gold without giving us benefits. So they repealed all the gold under threat of a $10,000 fine and 10 years in prison. We, as we the people, became the banks, not the banks. The banks just administrate, they administer paperwork. We are the actual banks through these SESTA QV trusts. So that's why they started that birth certificate policy is they, the International Monetary Fund pledged money for every birth certificate. So our, our Federal Reserve notes are not backed by oil, even though that's what people thought. It's not backed by gold. It's backed by our birth certificates. And so even though now it's worthless, the Federal Reserve notes, and we're getting ready to change um, – in this situation where this person had three felonies, which the penalty phase of each each felony is $2 million, so a total of $6 million is what that person was facing, the judge sends in a form – well, they have an arraignment, which is what your charges are. So they, they go through and they determine which charges they're going to levy against you. In this situation, it's the three felony charges, so they sent the court clerk of the district courts, which is the – 9th District, 10th District, 11th District, and 12th District across the United States. Canada's the 13th District. Mexico's the 14th District under Washington, D.C. So as that head of the clerk of the courts, because all courts just have a ton of clerks in them, the head of the 9th District Court interacts with the Treasury Department. So when they send, they have the arraignment and they determine what the charges are, in this situation it's three felonies, $6 million, they send in a Form 273 into the Treasury Department that says, hey, start liquidating this person's SESTA QV trust, which means liquidating it is taking it from Treasury bonds and turning it into Federal Reserve notes. So they start selling off the Treasury bonds, and they keep going through that sell-off of Treasury bonds until they're told not to. Where so does then that money go? It just sits in an account. It's just sitting there, and I'll go. I'll get to where it's going to go. So that's a form two seventy three. Then they go to trial, and they determine whether the charges are going to stick. So the arraignment is just to determine what the charges are. Then they go to trial, and then they put them on trial. Once in this situation, the person was guilty of the three felony charges. So then, once they've determined yes, the charges are legit, the charges have been uh, are stuck. Now they send in a form, the clerk of the court sends in a form 274 that tells the Treasury Department, hey, heads up, we found them guilty. Now it's now here's the form that says we are going to now, the next step is, is we got to go to sentencing, but we're confirming that the $6 million is legit. So then they go through sentencing, however long that takes to go through sentencing. Keep in mind that uh, – says to QV trust is continuously liquidating. So it doesn't matter. There's no time frame. It just keeps liquidating all the treasury bonds in there until they send in the final sentencing. And in the final sentencing, it's a form 275 that says, hey, okay, we found they are guilty. This is the sentencing for them. Wire over the money to us, to the court. So now the court just got $6 million. The judge gets a portion of that. As retention, the prosecuting attorney gets a portion of that. It's up to the judge and the prosecuting attorney whether they cut in the defense attorney. So this is why it is so important for people to correct their status. Mm -hmm. It's not about the taxes. It's not about anything else other than your status standing in jurisdiction. This is the most important thing 
aside from the court system, this is the most important thing that you have to understand. You have to comprehend. I try not to use that word. Guys, God created man, which is we the people. That which you create, you control. So God controls us. Man created government so that we could be, number one, we need to be self-governed. We need to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and we're not. We because of what society has dictated to us. Hey, you don't need groceries. Go get groceries as you need them. You don't need water storage. So now we're dependent on the government to come and provide for us. We've watched that happen during every hurricane, all these other disasters that happen. We're not self-reliant. As we the people, the Bill of Rights applies to us. The Declaration of Independence applies to us, and we had a certain duty in the Declaration of Independence, and I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to say it the way it is, to abolish the government that is no longer working for us. This government has not been working for us for eons. Mm -hmm. It does not work for us. It works for the benefit of the government. So comprehend this. You're not a citizen of the United States. You are a citizen of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a territory of 10 square miles that belongs to the Vatican and the crown. It is not our country. This is why the January 6 people got in so much trouble is because they went into a foreign nation and acted up against the queen mm -hmm. or against the Vatican, however you want to look at it. And they are being held to account under a different set of laws, not the laws here in the United States, but again, they're being held accountable to statutes, regulations, and corporate bylaws, mm -hmm. not the laws in the United States. Our political representatives don't work for us. They work for the Crown and the Vatican mm -hmm. or Washington, D.C. Anything that This is why nothing changes in politics. We can protest as much as we want. We can have outbursts as much as we want. We can hope it's going to change. We can send a million letters. But at the end of the day, they go right in the round file, and they don't give a shit about us until it comes to election time. American state nationals, we the people, we don't vote. We are electors. Citizens vote, and your vote goes into the, the electoral college. And it's somebody else goes and places a vote for us as a representative of the people. Well, that's not where we want to be. We want to be the electors. So our so, vote counts as an electoral vote. So when you go to vote, so here we go with another pro. Um, so when you go to vote, it's going to go straight to. Yes, as an elector. As an elector versus you go and you place your vote inside of a electoral college uh, facility and then it's transferred to here to there to, it might not even make well, look it. Look what happened in the last election. Okay, so we had a bunch of mail-in ballots that didn't even count for us. So what? So is it a different process, or do you go to the same place, or do you just send your votes directly there? It's a completely different process, and so we've got the process ready to roll out on the website. Okay. It's, okay. It so takes time to go through this process because you're removing yourself. This is what you have to comprehend this too. By you being on the voter rolls, it's what traps you into jury duty. <laughs> so, so, okay. And these are all voluntary services that we've all become adapted to. And, and we've basically been, well, we're forced to think that we have to participate in this, in these. Uh, different well, because you things. do. Right. As a citizen, you do, or you're going to jail, or you're going to get fined. So, okay, so here we are, have, have it that we we have, um, where, am I, where are my notes here? So we, we are basically, we're going to be able to bear arms. We're able to remove ourselves from the authority of a judge. Um, uh, we are uh, being able to vote as the elector. Um, what are some of the other pros? You we know um, that some people don't have to use they don't do taxes and that's a process. Once you get there, you'd know. OK, well, that. this is this is what most people don't comprehend mm -hmm. there. You are taking yourself from through the birth certificate process. They put us into the public because we're a corporation. So we're now a public corporation. We're being bought and sold on the stock market every day. Mm -hmm. You are taking yourself and that is your all caps name. Mm hmm. 
The Wizard of Oz was based, all the information in the Wizard of Oz is based on exactly this stuff right here. Mm -hmm. We're taking our all caps name and we are separating ourselves from the all caps name because we don't own the all caps name. Mm -hmm. The government is the owner of the all caps name. Actually, the Vatican is the owner of the all caps name. And so by, by taking ourselves out of the public and putting ourselves into the private, that again removes jurisdiction from them. We don't have – people think that by living in their home that it's private property. It's not yeah. private property. It's re They turned it into commercial banking terms, residential, commercial, industrial, so that they could tax it. Private property under the United States Code is non-taxable. So, so by them turning them into residences, they now tax it, state taxes, county taxes, city taxes, where by turning it, by taking your property, getting a land patent on it, which now puts you into ownership of the actual property. Even if you own a mortgage, you can still do a land patent. It gives you superior title to the mortgage company. Oh, so, okay. So there's another pro. So once you become an American state national, you have a different entitlement to the property that you own. Well, uh, let me, let me explain that. You okay. can still do a land patent if you're not an American state national. Okay. However, being a citizen leaves you capable of being molested by them, mm -hmm. which you're Again. accountable to the corporate statutes, regulations, and bylaws. By becoming an American state national, you're only accountable to the laws. So let me so ask you. you want to, it, when you do your land patent, you can certainly do a land patent, but what Ron Gibson, who was the creator of the land patent book that we sell, mm -hmm. what he was finding was his people were still getting in trouble because they're getting molested by the court system. And then David Strait uh, found out that people were getting their homes foreclosed on. And so then they got together and said, hey, well, if we apply your land patent process to what we're doing, and hey, if you guys apply the American State National stuff to what you're doing, it now puts you on a completely different plane and they can't do anything to you. So, so it's a process to go through a land patent. And then you through that process, the books that we sell is everything you need to know about a land patent. It's a manual on how to patent your land. So, and then once the land patent is complete, it's non-leanable, cannot be molested by the judicial system because it's above them. Mm -hmm. And it returns it back to private property. So then you've got to go through your tax assessment and return and correct all the errors on the tax assessment, which is what we teach in the videos. So there's a little bit of process behind this. Um, now, I know that you still, I asked you, so you don't drive with a, a driver's license. You told me, no, I do because I carry cargo. And according to- Well, so I, this, I'm a general contractor. I have to rent equipment all the time. Mm -hmm. So in order to rent equipment, you have to have a driver's license. They're not going to okay. allow me to rent equipment because let's comprehend this. Everything that they've done in this system is mm -hmm. done so that we have to have driver's licenses. We have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. We have to have bank accounts. We have to have companies that we're getting our money from. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't qualify to get loans. Mm -hmm. The whole system is set up just like a big circle. And if you play outside of that circle, you don't get the benefits of being in that circle. So for right, let's let's just use buying a home. Well, if you don't pay taxes are voluntary. Federal taxes are voluntary. There's not a law in the books that says you have to pay federal taxes. Mm -hmm. By you filling out a 1040 form and declaring your income. You now put yourself in a position to where you are obligated to pay the percentage that they determined you must pay. Mm -hmm. This is why they don't teach you to become an entrepreneur and own your own company. They teach you to go to college, get an education, and go work for a corporation so that those corporations are siphoning your taxes out every two weeks, and there's no waiting. And you don't have any tax write-offs when you're an employee. Mm -hmm. They don't teach you how to become an entrepreneur that says, okay, I'm going to define what taxes I pay. And mm -hmm. if, I, if as a corporation, I can write off all my fuel, I can write off all my expenses, I can write off all these things. And then you minimize your tax obligation. 
So I want to do a recap just so that way everybody can get a general idea of where we're at. We talked about gmeiutility.org. You can type that in on your toolbar. You can go to where it says search, put in your social security number and wherever the dashes are, just put a space with the space bar and put in your social and you can see how many times a day you are. Well, this, it shows you what corporations are buying and selling your treasury bonds on the stock market right now. So when I look at mine, I'm being traded about 45,000 times. And for each time I'm traded, that's a $10,000 treasury. A, a treasury bond is the minimum denomination of a treasury bond is $10,000. So, now, when I first started this, I had 204,000 Come corporations that were buying and selling my treasury bonds. I've now got 359,000. That was August of 2020 was the first time I looked at it. Now I'm at 359,000. So that money, once you're an American state national, it no longer is um, accessible to them, <clears throat> correct? No, it's all, okay. it's their money. Okay. You are the only signatory on that account mm -hmm. <clears throat> that so that was the founding fathers created the public charitable trust mm -hmm. underneath the public charitable trust is everybody's individual SESTA QV trust. Can you spell that SESTA QV? C-E-S-T-U-I. Q-V-E-V-I-E. SESTA QV. Okay. Can you spell okay, it again so for everybody in the audience just one more time? C E S T U I C E S T U E is about the Q Q U E V I E C E S T U Q V trust. And, and that was created by the Vatican back in 1666. Well, by the Crown actually was the one who created that. So the C E S T U Q V trust is the pledged money that they put in there as treasury bonds. And when they repealed all the gold, what we were supposed to learn, because when they repealed all the gold, the United States became responsible for all the debt of the people because they took all of our gold from us. So the United States became responsible for our debt. This is why when you receive a, 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 a bill, a utility bill or something, and it has the little plastic window in it. What you were, what it's in your number one, all your utilities are in your all caps name. Anything that has to do with banking is your all caps name. That's your vessel name. Okay. So what you were supposed to learn how to do, we were all supposed to learn how to do this. When we received our utility bill, we were supposed to sign it. And then put our account number on there and return it to the utility company. The utility company would now discharge the debt through the treasury. The treasury would pay the bill off. And that was the process. But they never taught us how to do that. So you're saying that you've done this and now that the now. No, I haven't. I have. That's how it was supposed to be set up. OK. But they never taught us how to do that. OK. So there is a way to discharge debt through the CEST QV trust. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah, because there's a lot of people saying that there's ways to get the the CESTA, CESTA QV trust. CESTA QV trust to pay off your debt once you're an American state national, not your debt, but your bills that you have, right? Yes, okay. because that's public debt. Okay. So it pays off public debt. It doesn't pay off private debt. If I have a private debt over here with you, let's say, it's not going to pay that off. Mm -hmm. But public debt, such as your utility bills and things like that, yes. Now, have you heard that's each month or is that just one time? There, I've heard so many people with so many different things. And there's mm -hmm. this is since I've been in this process, I've always said, okay, everybody's got a friend that's getting at their CESTA QV trust, but mm -hmm. not one person can produce them for me so I can interview them. Yeah, they can't produce the documents, huh? Okay, so no. I have some advanced questions, but, but before I get into these questions, let's open up the question Q&A for our participants that are in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask everyone to unmute their mics if you have a question. 
because I'm sure we might have a few questions here with everybody. This is probably new to everybody's ears. Um, let me go ahead if that, if I'll go stop ahead. if they chime in. So here are some of the Q and A's from people that were supposed to be on the call, but they they're in Florida and they're dealing with the hurricane coming in. So they wasn't able to ask these questions. So they, they wrote them out to me. How are the assemblies involved in becoming, becoming sovereign? They're speaking to the state assemblies, which is Anna von Wright's, and they're not. They're okay. conning them into thinking that they are actually giving them the ability to become sovereign, but their process falls short. Okay. And they That's are not. Saying. They're still citizens okay. at the end of the day. And so Anna von Wright's is trying to create a bank so that, quote unquote, they can all borrow from this bank. She's been trying to do it for the last 10 years. But what she's doing is having people sign over their birth certificates to her. You never want to do that. Mm -hmm. Your Sesta QV trust is your trust. She's trying to get them to sign over all their uh, ability to control that Sesta QV trust over to her. And then she's going to start up a bank. Okay. Well, that's no different than what the bankers are doing. Okay. Next question. Do you utilize the state assembly to become sovereign? No. Okay. We are self-governed, guys. Okay. Nothing. We have the right of self-determination, not group determination, not a conglomeration of determination. We have the right of self-determination. Okay. We also have the right of self-government, self-governing. Right. And we have to exercise that right. We have not done that here in the United States. We've become so complacent and lazy and apathetic that we kind of throw our hands in the air and just follow by whatever anybody's told us. And these are the rules. We're just going to be like sheep. Well, mm -hmm. the rules are not the rules. Mm -hmm. They're just what they've told us and what we've been indoctrinated to believe. And that's the biggest step in doing this. The paperwork's the easy part. Unlearning the indoctrination and relearning, which doesn't mean I'm going to be 54 in October. So it hasn't been 54 years of indoctrination. Let's say it's because I've been deep diving a lot of this stuff for years, but it's going to still, the learning curve is going to be a lot shorter now that I know everything that I already know. It's just that I can now look at the things that I've been indoctrinated with, which I've already pushed a lot of that out in my lifetime and now looking at what I need to actually learn about the judicial system and how to represent myself mm -hmm. or stand for myself mm -hmm. is really what it comes down to and not let anybody determine anything for me, but me and my family, mm -hmm. you should be determining for you and your family. You should be raising Kings and Queens. You, you should, number one, we should be as adults acting as if we are Kings and Queens and raising our children to be future Kings and Queens mm -hmm. self-governed. And that's not what we do in the United States. Our next question was, do you need a long form birth certificate? Yes, to go through the second portion of the process. Okay. And so uh, everybody knows we have two processes on there. You, By going to a seminar or you purchasing the video on the website, you get completely into the website. So how the website set up is it's set up like a vestibule. So a vestibule is when you go to walk in a building, it has the first set of doors that you walk into and it's a little square. That's called the vestibule. The website set up the same way. Then you open up the second set of doors and you walk into the actual building. So, so just to, to bring everybody up to date, what Ben has orchestrated is a website where they walk you through everything that you need to know. Yes. The first part of that, uh, the first part of those doors is to open it up for all the videos on exactly what he's talking about from yes. A to Z um, in six videos, is it? Six. Well, it's, it's three days. Yes, it's an a.m. and p.m. of every day. So and then you watch you watch the videos and then by you purchasing that video, it opens up the complete website, which is what I call the building. So it opens up everything so that now you can see. And what it does is you sign in or you register. I, I don't like to use that word. You sign in like you would sign in for a social media account. But what it does is as you start going through the process, it keeps track of where you're at in the process and tells you what's next. So your first thing is you got to go in there and buy the video or you have to attend a seminar to be able to get in the website. 
once you get in the website and you start your process, it's the affidavit repudiation. By you purchasing the video or having gone to a seminar, then you get the paperwork, blank paperwork for free mm -hmm. through the website. But we also have a uh, pay $50 and then you can autofill option in the product. So you can autofill it out and it'll kick you out a PDF with an instruction manual on exactly how you have to sign it, how you have to mail it what the waiting period is because there's 21 days after you've, well, it takes three weeks for the government to receive it in Washington, DC. And then it's 21 days unrebutted. That's part, part of you going through this process is you're starting to learn the judicial system An affidavit of truth unrebutted for 21 days becomes truth in law. And that's what you're filling out is an affidavit of truth. So after 21 days, it becomes the truth. And so then unrebutted, which they don't rebut them anyway, then you have to go through the second series of paperwork, which now takes your long form birth certificate. It takes every form of your name that you've ever used. And now is basically taking ownership of that name saying, hey, this is me, my upper and lowercase name. I'm separating myself from the vessel, which is the all caps name. And then the second part of um, the website, once they make it through the seminar or the videos per se, and it teaches and you can go back and watch them over and over and over for where you fall short, because it is a lot of information to intake it's information overload. Yes, it is. And, and then once you get through those doors and you've watched all the videos and you become very ac acquainted with it, then they have a part where it's your paperwork and it's an autofill of the paperwork. So that way you do not mess yeah. your paperwork up because you have to unprogram your mind to the new programming of the new system. You don't even use the same. Is it different? You got to use what mail? Is it the? Well, registered mail. For the for what you're sending the Secretary of State of the United States has to go registered mail because this is why it's important to watch the videos. Mm -hmm. We don't comprehend that there's two of everything. Mm -hmm. So there's the post office, which is government, and then there's the U which is USPO, United States Postal Office, and then there's USPS. Same exact building, same exact doors you walk into. The United States Postal Office has the registered mail, which is government. And so it has a, it's tracked. It's just like our mail, our uh, voting ballots. It has a, everybody who touches that registered mail, it goes into a locked envelope. And from the locked envelope, it leaves the building. It goes into a truck. Well, everybody who's touched it has to sign it. Mm -hmm. United States Postal Service handles certified mail mm -hmm. and stamps and boxes and all these things that you would purchase at a profit for the United States Postal Service. United States Postal Service is the corporation. United States Postal Office is the government. They're not one of the same. They're completely and entirely different. So that's another thing that you're going to learn in these videos is how they do contracts. There's what's called the styles manual. If you fill out a sheet of paper, let's just I'm any any kind of anything. When you fill out a document and you put something in a box in this contract, let's call it a contract, and you have something that's inside of a box in that contract, none of that stuff that's in the box applies to the contract. It's void of the contract. Mm. So that's called the styles manual. And every document that we fill out in the court system or anything by government has boxes. Mm -hmm. But you're agreeing to this contract. Well, everything within that box is not part of the contract. And mm -hmm. it's probably all of your rights. <laughs> so once you get through the, the second part of the website, that's your autofill. It helps you fill out your paperwork. It does take, like he said, about six well, months. Um, no, it's, so it's $50. You get the paperwork for free if you buy the videos or have attended the seminar. Okay. If you want, if you're, if you don't feel comfortable filling out the paperwork yourself, some people do, a lot of people don't. And so then you can pay $50 for the first portion, which is the autofill. And it, you'll just punch in on the computer, all the information, it'll kick you out a PDF. With that PDF comes instructions on how to sign it, what color of ink, because that's important. 
And ink color is important. Contracts are signed in blue over to the left side. Signing as the man or the woman is signed in red as in the blood over on the right-hand side signature section. If you're signing anything as a trust document, that's signed in purple, and that's in the center signature area on the document. So you'll get these instructions right here. And um, and then and then you can start your process. So the next question was, what exactly is the Truth Lending Act and the SFR 31? I'd have to look it up. OK, you have to send that to me. OK. And then what is a stamped act? Stamp act. What I'd is have to the stamp act. OK, you'll have to send that to me. OK. And do you need to get pre authenticated at state level and federal level. You need so you need a double authenticated birth certificate. Okay. There is a process beyond all of this. What this process right here does, this is the simplest portion of the process. What this does is it changes your standing. Changing your status changes your standing, which now gives you a different jurisdiction that you're in. You are right now we're held under Admiralty Maritime Law. Mm -hmm. We want to be in common law, mm -hmm. which is not given to us until we take it. You have to take it. It's up to the judge, which that is called right now we're held in Article One courts mm -hmm. where the judge is the administrator. The judge is judge, jury and executioner. Mm -hmm. It's up to that judge as to whether he gives us an Article Three court, which is a common law court, where if there is no victim, there is no crime. So you're talking about completely different jurisdictions. Will we need? Will we even need to change our status once Nasara happens? That's a question. We are down to okay. ten minutes remaining. I'm gonna I'm gonna be real blunt about this. The new boss is the same as the old boss. What makes you think that they're going to give you anything? Mm -hmm. The new bankers are the same as the old bankers. They're just trying to figure out a different system to control everybody. Now that they've already got control, why would you give them more control? So so our other admin uh, that's in the group, she says, um, you know, a lot of people are going to end up switching to the American state national to remove themselves from the system. And um, if you were to leave us with something before we end the call, what, what would you leave us with that would say, this is what we need to do. And this is the importance of why we need to, the importance of this. The net, you guys need Status. to take it all the way to the next step, which is we have to take ourselves into trust. Everything in the United States is held in trust, the land, everything other than people. The people are chattel property. So you need to pull yourself out of that system and put yourself into trust. And we have a whole trust process that's beyond all of this that we're talking about today that now completely take a foreign express trust takes you completely outside of the United States jurisdiction altogether. They can't talk about you. They can't do anything to you because you're completely and entirely out of their jurisdiction, non-taxable, mm -hmm. not on their roles, not under their jurisdiction. So, so if anybody wants to learn more about the um, American state and national, I'm going to take this site and I'm actually going to copy it right now, copy, and I'm going to paste it right here in the group. We have another question come in. Um, do, we have another question come in. So does he and David work with Anna or? No. Okay. On their issues with, or us, their issues with Anna, or is there issues with Anna? Anna Von Wright's process, she teaches them how to stand firmly on the land. Okay. The land, law is an acronym, land, air, and water. It's not the hierarchy, but it's, it's what law stands for, land, air, water. Land is common law, air is canon law, which is trust. Mm -hmm. Water is admiralty maritime law. So corporations are held in admiralty maritime law. Trust documents are the air, which is canon law. 
common law, law of the land, is where people are mm -hmm. until they take themselves into trust. The hierarchy is the air is above the land, which the land is above the water. Anna von Reitz teaches their people how to stand firmly on the land. Well, land, air, water are three jurisdictions. God commanded you to take dominion over the land, the air, and the water for a reason so that they could not molest you. Mm -hmm. If you're only standing on the land, you're going to get washed out by the water or washed out by the air. Mm -hmm. So you need to take dominion over all three. She doesn't teach her people to do that. And as I talk to these, their state assembly people, oh no, even if you bring up any, any ideas outside of what they believe, they'll kick you out of the groups. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's with this information right here, you want to get all the information and not just selective information. And if you have questions, you want to get to the bottom of the questions because this is a very new area that uh, people are in. Again, this is Ben Barlow with American State and National. If you want to find him, he is on Facebook under Ben Barlow. He has a uh, a warrior um, as his. I'm profile. on TikTok as breaking at uh, at breaking underscore Barlow. I've got breakingbarlow.com getting ready to go live. And I just put his information, or I just put the um, the HTTPS back, semicolon backspace, backspace, app.statenational.us backslash. Uh, well, mine says login because I'm already logged in. Yeah. Um, I've already started the process. It was easy to start this process. Um, I have so let me Let me finish it with this. At the end of the day, this information has been around for a very long time. The Wizard of Oz was all about this banking and industrial revolution. This information has been around forever. It's just now coming to surface because what's happened in the past is the government would jail anybody or kill them off who was talking about this stuff. This is where the government created sovereign citizen. They're sovereign or they're citizens. But Eric Holder, during the Obama administration, went around to every single attorney general and all the police forces to get them to under, understand how to compromise a sovereign citizen, somebody claiming they're sovereign. And then they would throw them in jail and treat them harshly so everybody would be afraid to do it. Yeah, because I think we see a lot of people being afraid to take the steps to remove themselves from the system. That's all. I hear that a lot. When by design. Mm-hmm. Well, how do I, everybody wants to stop paying taxes. Okay, well, why? Is it just to stop paying taxes or is it to take back your sovereignty? If it's to take mm -hmm. back your sovereignty, I'm behind it. If it's just to stop paying taxes because you don't want to pay taxes, well, that's the wrong come from. Right. Most people wanting to do this process, well, how do I get at that money? Okay, well, that's the wrong come from. How about taking back your rights, freedoms, and liberties first, the ability to abolish this government that doesn't work for us so that we can actually implement a good government that does work for us. How about that? We got to come at it from the right reasons instead of all the wrong reasons. Well, I want to thank you, Ben, for being here today. Before so I much. let him off of the hook, do you have <laughs> any other questions? I'm seeing and I want to and I want to say I want to pray for all those that are in Florida we are missing quite a few of our following on here on this chat because they are in Florida and they're preparing for today for um is I it Ian to come in today Hurricane Ian he's coming in really strong and so people are you know they're tying down everything they have in Florida yes. so our prayers are with all of you guys in the state of Florida mm -hmm. um and in the surrounding and Ben it was wonderful having you here any yeah. other guest want to step up before he's Let no longer here let me throw this out to you real quick once you guys get in the website uh we've also got a telegram channel that's just specifically for our group so that you can ask questions oh great but we want you to watch the reason why we want you to get the video so that you can begin your education so that we're not trying to catch you up to speed because then we spend all of our time trying to catch you up to speed that the videos will do it for you Right. And that's important as everybody watch the videos and and learn about um, some of these things. Uh, Liz, do you have a question? I see you unmuted your mic. I would love for anybody that has questions. We only got about two more minutes here. And we could do another one. 
Yes, let's do that because I'm sure people will have questions after this one and they 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 want me to bring the caller back. Like, oh, I got this question or I got this question. Well, and then I'm in the process. I've already got all my gear for the podcast, Breaking Barlow podcast. It's We're putting together some other loose ends. We got to get North Dakota done and then we're going to light up this podcast. So. so where can we see you next? North Dakota, Bismarck, North Dakota, North Dakota October 14th, 15th and 16th. You can uh we'll have a webinar option for that as well okay and you can get you so to purchase tickets for the actual seminar is seminars.breakingbarlow.com okay to, pur to purchase tickets for the actual seminar here at the end of the month then the webinar is going to go the webinar option is going to go live so that they can sign up for the webinar okay and still purchase tickets and then i'm going to start doing seminars myself well, we appreciate you coming here and spending your morning with us. As always, Thank our you. guests are always, they, they love all this. Uh, how do we find Ben on Instagram? Can you send me your Instagram link and I will go ahead and place it in the Telegram group here or your Telegram, yes. your Telegram group, I mean your Telegram group. So I'll put that in our Telegram. You are in the EDU 102, right? The EDU yes, 102. Yes, yes, so you can am. just drop you drop your link in there, and everybody can yep. follow you over there. And then again, he is uh, with the American State and National. Uh, if you want more information, you can always inbox me here on the EDU 102. I want to thank all of our guests for being here this morning. It's been a fun in the, the morning. Went thank really fast. Thank you Ben for being here. I appreciate, appreciate you. you guys. Thank you everybody. Guys. Next week uh, we have um, we have uh, Julie B with the MedFed Light equipment she'll be with us 10 a.m on monday so i'll see you guys on friday for newsroom Charles smith thank you guys for being here thank you, ben. thank you guys. we'll thank see you, you next time thank you, you. Bye. you too bye